Hello, this is Cynthia Sue Larson with Reality Shifters talking with you today about Wigner bubbles and the Mandela effect. And the first news that I want to report besides the topic is um, that my books are out in ebook, paperback, and hardcover. This is the hardcover edition of my new book, The Mandela Effect and its society. And the reason it matters is because what's pictured on the cover, if you're wondering, what is that? <laughs> well, the idea here is these are representing the idea um, inside the book that I cover of Wigner's bubbles. Now that's a term coined by the physicist Eric Cavalcanti to talk about the ideas of Eugene Wigner. And all of this traces back to the Schrodinger's cat experiment, basically. <coughs> So if you remember the Schrodinger's cat experiment, I think I've talked about it before. Oh, good. I love this, these color, <laughs> we've got color illustrations in the hardcover. Um, this will be black and white in the um, paperback and color in the Kindle. But this picture shows there's a cat in a superposition of states. And the, the experiment was designed by, you, um, by <laughs> Irvin Schrodinger. What he wanted to show is that it's a little bit ridiculous to say, that something as large as a cat could be super in a superposition of states. And it just seems weird. It seemed improbable, to, at the very least, impossible at worst. And so what basically the Schrodinger cat experiment is, is that a cat, a hypothetical cat, not a real cat, is placed inside of a box or a container of some sort, which is um, not showing what's happening inside. So there's no way that an observer knows if the cat is alive or dead so far. And that becomes important because also inside the box, along with the cat, is a little glass vial of poison gas. When released, it would kill the cat if the cat breathed it. And um, associated with the glass vial of poison gas is a little random number generator, which is uh, set based on the operations of a quantum radioactive isotope. So when the radioactive isotope randomly decays, that would trigger, or not trigger, the um, little hammer that breaks the glass vial that releases the poison that kills the cat. So everything hinges on this little tiny bit of um, quantum triggering device inside there. So where does Eugene Wigner come in? Eugene Wigner comes in uh, here's an illustration of this, also in the book. <laughs> Love the color. And um, this illustration is showing that the, there's one scientist holding a box and deciding whether the cat is alive or dead. What's interesting is there's a scientist observing that first obser the first observer. And even though the first observer can open the box and see whether the cat's alive or dead, there is a time frame when the second scientist is still witnessing a superposition of states for that first, um, for that first physic physicist or observer. And so this is really important because now what's happening is you've got the situation where two observers don't necessarily agree on what's happening at the same place in the same time. And it's obvious why they can't because one of them has more information than the other. That's one way to look at it. Um, but this is where things get really interesting. And I describe some of this in, in, in the book. This is in the middle of the book, roughly. <laughs> and this is in the chapter where I'm getting into, you know, the science behind all of this. This, um, what, is, what chapter is this? This is chapter five, Mandela Effect Theories. And so it's basically getting into this idea of, you know, what's going on. Anyway, um, Excuse me, that's not right. It's chapter six, Science of the Mandela Effect. That makes more sense. It would be the science chapter. Okay, so when we look at the fact that clearly you can have these two observers and they're witnessing different things, maybe one of them might even be able to witness eventually a different outcome than the first. Because when you see things in a superposition of states, you're acknowledging that it's not decided yet. It easily could be the cat is alive or dead, you know? And so just because the first observer knows for sure, and they now have collapsed that quantum wave function, and they're witnessing what's inside the box, the second observer, until they're actually seeing something, it's still an undecided situation. And physicist Kaslov Bruckner, he's been conducting very fascinating experiments in this field, the Wigner's friend paradox field. And he said, um, 
that uh, we can't really assume our past knowledge of the present, that we have proved that one's own knowledge from the past cannot be used in the present either. Now that's relevant for those of us experiencing the Mandela Effect because sometimes, just because we saw things a certain way previously, doesn't mean it stays that way, right? <laughs> and according to some people that are um, the mainstream view of the Mandela Effect currently is that it's mistaken memory, mistaken memories collectively and so forth. That's a big assumption that those are mistakes in the memories. Uh, I think that it's more like it's a mismatched memory or people have different memories than the collective might have. And so this is uh, a mechanism by which that can unfold. And also uh, continuing with Kasner, Kas <laughs> Kaslov Bruckner, he says that observing quantum systems is known to fundamentally change them. That, that's sort of an overview. Uh, basically, that's not even in contest at all. That's not even controversial. We know for sure, pretty much everyone agrees that to continue to observe a quantum system is to change it. And we also notice that's true about memories also, just a side note, which is fascinating. But with respect to the Wigner's friend paradox, Bruckner's work shows that after the friend's measurement has taken place, we are in a counterintuitive situation where Wigner describes the friend in question, excuse me, in quantum superposition of observing two different outcomes, while from the friend's perspective, a d definite outcome must be perceived. And once again, that would be similar to this picture where we've got one scientist who definitely knows what's in the box. He's opened the box and can see for sure if the cat's alive or dead. The other one in this picture, um, they, are, they are finding out. But there's that time until they find out which way it is. And it's in a superposition of states, so it could be either way. Could be alive, could be dead, and they're, they might even have a feeling it's going to go one way or another. If they're asking how good can it get, then they'd be doing what this guy's doing, and he's actually quantum jumping. He's basically choosing a timeline, choosing that cat's going to be alive. Um, but the written text here and the work of the physicists is showing that that second scientist, until they also see inside the box, that wave function has not yet collapsed, so it's wide open. That's the pe time period that I notice most often is receptive to these kinds of dynamic interplay. And we can also notice flip-flopping. Now, I've got a terminology index, well not an index, but there's a chapter that goes through the terminology and it, it's got terms. And in here, a commonly used phrase by people who experience the Mandela effect is something called flip-flops. And so you can look that up and see if, if you run across these terms when you're researching the Mandela effect and you don't know what people are talking about, I've um, included those here. So flip-flops occur when a Mandela effect goes back and forth between two or more states. So examples of common Mandela effect flip-flops would include, for example, flint stones, but some people then saw flint stones, and sometimes it goes back to flint stones. So it's just very strange, like, wait a minute, I saw it change. <laughs> and also another good example is Rodin's The Thinker sculpture, which some people have noticed um, the, the thinker's hand is, um, some people remember the forehead, some people remember the chin. It's in various positions, and that's another good candidate for seeing flip-flops, noticing it one way and then witnessing, man, it's really changed. It's in a whole different place or it's back again. And so these kinds of things can be explained again with the cover illustration, these Wigner bubbles, and, um, and that's the Wigner effect, you know, the whole idea that you can basically be observing another observer and witness changes. So th this is very, very thought-provoking material. I know I've talked about these things before, but I'm excited to see it in, in written form. <laughs> I'm excited that after four and a half years, this book is finally out, and it's fun. I, I'm, I'm really enjoying the hardcover version. I've not yet published a hardcover edition of any of my books. That The other ones, the first book that came out was Aura Advantage, a long time ago, 2003. Before that, there was a printed version of Reality Shifts, when consciousness changes the physical world. It was sort of in a three ring and a spiral bound version originally. Those are the oldest versions. But so far, I've never yet uh, have I had the hardcover till now. 
and I like it a lot because it seems like it protects the book. I tend to open it a lot, flip through it a lot, and it seems so far it's holding up pretty well. Like it won't get quite so bedraggled quite so quickly. <laughs> Turns into the Velveteen Rabbit pretty fast. And um, inside the book I've got other color illustrations like talking about this is a Mandela effect that happened with my first, um, well not the first time it happened, I've had two books be Mandela affected, and I do describe that in here. I've got a chapter where I talk about some of the things I've personally experienced. This is definitely one of them, uh, witnessing that the cover of my book, Quantum Jumps, used to have a section inside the book describing what is the cover all about, just like I just walked through the cover of this book. But now there's no explanation inside the book at all. And so I've had to uh, explain it in, in this book here. Um, to catch up and cover that missing piece because it still hasn't shown up and now it's been a number of years. Um, the other book that changed was Aura Advantage and in that book I used to talk about um, an experience of talking with my salad and and that was very distressing to um, for some reason to well for an obvious reason to people that were vegetarians they didn't want to hear about the sentience of, of plant life so now the book no longer contains that section. I used to get emails regularly, several a year, about that. So um, this is really fun. Uh, here's another color illustration I just popped it open to. It, it's fun to have the color, but it's really fun to have the book. So I'm just glad it's here and I'm proud to announce it to the world. It, it's here, you can get it now. Ebook, paperback, and hardcover. I'll be working on the audiobook. Um, haven't started it yet, but you, hopefully that'll come out later this year. So until next time, I hope you keep asking my favorite question, how good can it get? <laughs> Love you so much. This is Cynthia Sue Larson with realityshifters.com.